Welcome back to James's science class. Um, today I'm answering some questions from my students. So let's get started. Now I already discussed these questions before in one of the earlier videos, uh, but I will go through again. Now, in this case here, this person was on a stretch elastic rope and when he is being let go, he will actually spring upwards, still attached to the seat. Now as he goes up, he will stretch this elastic rope, just like stretching a rubber band. The more you stretch it, the harder it is to stretch it further. So when released, the elastic rope will pull Kyomi upwards. As it goes up, he will start to slow down from point Y to point Z, right, until he reaches point Z where he stops moving. Now the question here that was asked is, when the stretch elastic ropes were released, Kyok Ming moved from X to Z. Identify the force that caused him to move more slowly from Y to Z than from X to Y. All right? So call him move more slowly from Y to Z, which is from this part. So two marks, right? So I'm going to explain this way. First, I'm going to identify the force. So there's the first one mark, identify the force. And the force is elastic spring force. Where is it found? In the stretch elastic rope. Second part is explain the answer. Just like we talk about stretching a rubber band, and the more you stretch it, the harder it is going to be, the harder it is to stretch it further. So likewise, the more he goes up from Y to Z, the more he will be stretching this elastic rope the harder it is to stretch it because there's greater elastic force, uh, elastic spring force in the elastic rope that will pull him back down. The more he try to go forward, the more this elastic spring rope try to pull him back down. And of course that will slow him down because his direction of movement is in this direction. Whereas the elastic rope is pulling him in the opposite direction. Right, therefore, it will slow him down. Just like um, you think of frictional force, there's a force that goes against the direction of motion. In this case, it is not frictional force, but the idea is similar, that there is a force that is exerted in uh, the opposite direction as that of the direction of movement. So how I explain it is this. So as Kyok Meng moves from Y to Z, he stretches the elastic rope more. And what happens? Which causes more elastic spring force in the rope, that pulls him in a direction opposite uh, to his movement, thus slowing him down. And that explains why he slows down. Because there is an opposing force uh, that's acting on him, opposing his direction of movement. Now let's go on to the next question. So Johnson set up a circuit shown below he wanted to put a switch which could allow him to switch on and off a particular bulb while keeping the other bulbs lit. So, of course, he replaced a switch here. This kind of questions, uh, often students forget to do this. So, I'm very glad uh, you didn't forget to do this. This student uh, placed a cross on the circuit diagram here to show where I could place a switch. It's good if you turn this on. And of course, all everything, all the bulbs will be on. He will turn this off. And only these three bulbs are switched on. Now, if bulb P is replaced with a closed switch in the above setup, so if bulb P is being replaced with a closed switch, that's what it means, okay? If a closed switch, then what will happen to the brightness of bulb R? The brightness will that naturally decrease. Now explain. Now all you need to do to explain is this. You will learn before, let's say there's one battery and one bulb. Let's say circuit A. Compared to one battery and two bulbs placed in series. Compared to one battery and then circuit with three bulbs in series. And which the circuits in which would be which bulb will be the brightest bulb? Is it bulb A? Is it bulb B? Is it bulb C? 
the brightest bulb will be bulb A, and the dimmest bulb will be bulb C. The more bulbs there are in a series arrangement, the less bright it will be. This is all you, you learned, okay? So now you're asked to explain, so let's give a claim, it's a two marks thing, right? So let's claim correctly. What happened to the brightness? The brightness will increase. Now, how do we get the marks? Let's talk about the evidence. We notice that the evidence here is that there are three bulbs in series, and when we remove one of them, we're leaving R and S in series. Right, that's the first piece of evidence, which is from the observation. Next, so what if there are only R and S left in series? It means more circuit, sorry, more current, more current will flow through the circuit, and R and S will be brighter. Because there's more current flowing through each of the bulb, therefore each bulb will be will be brighter. Now next one in this case here. Now this is actually not really in syllabus, huh? This idea of rolling friction. You can go and Google for this idea of rolling friction. So I have searched a website for you to see. This is from a scientific journal called Science Direct. It talks about rolling friction. It is a frictional force which occurs when, when an object rolls on another object, like cars, wheels on the ground. Okay, and there are complicated formulas to explain this, but basically, right, um, the, what you know in school is what is described here as sliding friction. Now, sliding friction is like when two surfaces, there are flat surfaces in contact. Right, and that will be, and when one surface is, one surface slides across another, that's why you know what you know as sliding friction. But right here is talking about uh rolling friction. So that is different, and rolling friction is always very small compared with sliding friction. That's why when you want to push something heavy across the floor, you it's a good idea to place it on a trolley because the trolley has wheels at the bottom, and when there are wheels. There is the only friction there that you will see will be rolling friction and maybe a little bit of sliding friction, and that will actually reduce the amount of um energy you need to use in order to move it, reduce the amount of force as well that you need to use to push the item. Okay, so this is actually not in syllabus. So, how do we answer this using whatever you know? I think it's very simple, just say in this way. The straws will reduce the frictional force between the block and the surface. That is good enough for one mark. This is, uh, I'm just writing it to complete the sentence, but there's no mark for this because the question already talks about uh, using uh, less force, right, to pull the block. Okay. So this will be my answer for this, using whatever you know at this point in time to answer this. <coughs> Now this question, now an experiment was carried out with three objects, okay, uh, A, B, and C. They are of different masses. When different combinations of the object were hung on the string, the length of the stretch string was measured and recorded. Now what is important and I think you missed that out was this, the original length of the string was 10 cm. So let me draw this out for you to see. This is the original length of the spring when before any load was attached to it. And once you attach object A to it, the length of the spring, remember this is length of the spring, it is not extension. This is the extended length of the spring. This is not the extension. So in other words, when you place A here, this whole spring now becomes 30 cm in length. And the extension that is caused by A is only 20 cm, right? 30 minus 10 gives you 20. And when you place A and B, now the whole length becomes 60. 60 meaning you add another 30 to the original 30 here. So B causes this 30 cm extension, right? And of course you add C, it causes another 25 cm extension. 35 minus 60, right, and you get 25. 
So if you were to if you were to write out some relationship here, you can see now A causes the spring to stretch by 20 cm, B causes it to stretch by 30 cm, and C causes the spring to stretch by 25 cm. So the greater the mass, the greater the amount of uh, stretching that was done. Therefore, this one stretches it the most, B stretches the spring the most, it must have the greatest mass. A stretches it the least, 20 cm, so therefore course it's the least mass. So therefore, A has the smallest mass is the correct answer. You got it wrong because you forgot to take this piece of evidence, this piece of information into consideration. And you thought that A causes a 30 cm extension. This is not the extension. This is the extension. This is not the extension. And you thought this is greater than this. That's why your answer was uh, the wrong one. Alright? Now, this one, no problem. For question 4, I think it's question 5. Very complicated looking diagram. Now, it shows that uh, there are certain parts W. Uh. So, what is this part that is called W? My guess is that will be the chloroplast. Because, uh, of course, can it be stomata? Well, but it's talking about uh, cell, you see. So, if it's a cell, it won't be stomata. Right? W is a cell part found on the leaf cell. The number of W is not the same in layer Y and layer Z. And I think there's more in layer Y because I can see more of these little circles in layer Y and few of these little circles in layer Z. So there's more in Y. Based on the diagram above, which of the statement is or are true? If my guess is correct and Y is the chloroplast because it is a part found in leaf cell and we learned about drawing of leaf cell before Okay, or this big one will be our nucleus. This is the cell wall, cell membrane, cytoplasm, and this will be the chloroplast, which looks kind of looks like this. Although it's strange that these cells here do not have cell wall. Alright, so based on the above diagram, which is true, if these little circles are the chloroplast, which contain chlorophyll that traps light. Then layer Y traps more light than layer Z is correct. More chloroplast will have more chlorophyll and that will trap more light. So this is true. Layer Y is darker green in color because if there's more chloroplast, there's more chlorophyll and chlorophyll is green. So it will be greener. And if there's more chlorophyll there, it will make more food. Y should be making more food, not less food. So what is true is A and C is true. Okay, so this is the correct answer. Next one, ideal carry a heavy backpack and skate down a ramp without pushing off. So he just let gravity pull him down. And he stopped here before rolling back. And he got the energy conversion correct. The GPE in him was converted into KE, which is the point W. This is the Along the way, of course, there will be more and more and more KE, less and less and less GPE. As it goes up, there will be less and less KE, more and more GPE. Now, then he removed his backpack before skating down the ramp again. Why can't he still reach point Y? I think a simple way to answer is you think about energy conversion. So you know for sure when he slides down, skates down this uh, ramp, all of this GPE does not convert to KE. All right, it converts to KE plus heat plus sound. So there is actually less KE. All right, that you, you can't get all the KE from the GPE here. So that if the KE here is not as much as you like it to, the more it rolls up, the more sound, more heat energy the KE is converted to. Without enough KE, you cannot bring it up high enough to Y. So I have two ways of answering this. You can talk about whatever gravitational potential energy ideal had at point V, whether because you know that mass affects GPE. Right? But it doesn't matter how much GPE he has at V. 
even if he were carrying 20 bowling balls, he still wouldn't reach point Y. Even if he's not carrying anything, he still wouldn't reach point Y. Even if it's as light as a feather, he still wouldn't reach point Y. Because whatever GPE he had at point V will be partly converted to heat and sound energy as he skipped down the ramp. So the amount of kinetic energy he had would not be enough to move him up to point Y. Another way to answer it, if that helps you, is this. Not all the gravitational potential energy I did had at point V. Let me bring it up for you to see. So not all the gravitational potential energy I did had at point V would be converted to kinetic energy when he reaches his point. All right, to move him up to Y. Why? Because some of the gravitational potential potential energy would be converted to sound and heat energy, so there's less kinetic energy. Right? You want to move something further, you need more kinetic energy. If something has very little kinetic energy, it cannot move very far. Now, you didn't give me part A and part B, and this is part C, yeah? but I think I was still able to do this kind of, okay? Just by reasoning it out. So this Eunice plays a fish inside a tank with plants. Now then he observed the breeding rate start to increase when the temperature of the water increases here. So what does it mean when breeding rate increases? It means that they want to take in more oxygen. But why would they want to take in more oxygen? It's because there is not enough oxygen present. So this is how I reason it out for you. Huh? When the breeding rate increases, it means that increases, it means that the fish are not getting enough oxygen. So it must take in it must breathe with a higher rate. Uh, so to get in more oxygen. But why isn't there enough oxygen? There is there are underwater plants, right? It means that there isn't enough photosynthesis going on to produce enough oxygen. And what were the conditions that caused this rate of photosynthesis to decrease? It is the increase in temperature from 32 degrees Celsius to 36 degrees Celsius. When you look at your answer, it's clear that there must be some table or graph or something in part A or B with the information that you need. So your answer seems kind of make sense here. Right, so I'm not quite sure what's your question that you have for this, but I think you got it right. Okay, but this is the general idea behind this. Now here also I'm not quite sure why this is wrong. Now in this situation, right, in diagram 2. State a difference in terms of the amount of substances present between blood in A and blood in B. One mark only. So what comes what are carried in the blood that come from the lung to the heart? That will be we take in, inhale, take in oxygen that's absorbed into your bloodstream, carried, sent to your heart, pump the rest of the body. This part will be oxygen rich. Body uses the oxygen, so there will be oxygen poor but carbon dioxide rich. Blood will be sent to the heart, pump to the lungs, exhale to get rid of the carbon dioxide. So the answer makes sense. The blood in A, this part here, has more oxygen and less carbon dioxide. Compared to the blood in B, B has less oxygen, which is true, and more carbon dioxide. I'm not sure why I put across, this should be correct. Maybe you can share with me why your answer key says it is wrong. It is correct. Now, by now you should know this uh, interactions in the environment are no longer tested in, in your PSLE, so I will not be addressing this question, nor question about food web, which is also will not be addressed in your PSLE. Now, Peter was stirring a hot drink with a metal spoon. After some time, he, the spoon felt hot. Which of the following correctly explains why the spoon became hot after some time? The answer is 4. Why is it for? Firstly, the spoon gained heat from the hot drink. This part here explains why the spoon became hot. And then, the spoon gained heat from the hot drink 
and the spoon lost heat to his fingers. So what this part explains is why the spoon felt hot to his fingers. For, your, for the fingers to feel hot, heat must have flowed to the fingers. For the fingers to feel cold, like if you're sitting, sitting in an aircon room, like most likely you're in an air conditioned room right now, if you're feeling cold, that's because your body is losing heat to the environment. So you're feeling cold. But if you're sitting under the hot sun, you're gaining heat from the environment, so you feel hot. So the answer here should be 4, I think. Okay. Now, why the spoon became hot after some time? The spoon gained heat from the hot drink and his fingers. Now, um, I agree actually that the spoon will gain heat from the hot drink. And the spoon will also gain heat from his fingers. Alright? However, if that is the case, if that's, this part only happens for a while. Because once the, the, the spoon becomes hotter than, than Peter, then the spoon will no longer be gaining heat. In the beginning, when Peter first placed the spoon inside, when he first touched the spoon, the spoon may not feel hot yet. And the spoon is likely to be at room temperature, let's say 25 degrees Celsius. And Peter's body temperature could be at 36 degrees Celsius. Peter is at 36 degrees Celsius. The spoon is at maybe 25 degrees Celsius. Of course, heat from Peter will flow to the spoon at first. But once the spoon gains heat from the hot drink, all right, and the spoon will no longer be at 25 degrees Celsius, it will be much hotter, let's say it goes to 50 degrees Celsius. Then, this will be reversed. Heat will be flowing from the spoon to his finger, here. All right, so after some time, Whatever had is described in part 2 is not true. Right, so number 2 is wrong. Okay. Now, for this Karen question, we wrote down, when do you use the word like overcome? Now, I don't have a specific, you need to give me some specific examples. Huh? But actually, overcome is when one force is greater than the other. Remember in class, when we talked about Mr. Ashik and Mr. Long doing our arm wrestling, who can overcome, whose strength can overcome whose? Let's say if Mr. Ashik uses more force than Mr. Long, his force can overcome mine. His pushing force in one direction can overcome mine. If I use more force than him, then my pushing force can overcome his pushing force. Greater than. Alright, that's one example that I can give you. Or talk about frictional force. Alright? Uh, if you cannot overcome the friction, if you are sitting on a chair right now, right, most likely, there is frictional force between the legs of your chair and the ground. If let's say, mommy wants to pull your chair, alright, with you on it. If the pulling force that she exert is not greater than the frictional force, she cannot overcome the frictional force, you will not, your chair will not move with you on top of it. She need to use a greater force to pull your chair with you on top of the chair to overcome the fictional force. I hope that is clear enough for you. A ball was, re was released at point A on the ramp and rolls down the ramp. So what happens? Now you chose answer 2, right? And that is wrong. Why? We must know that this is the starting point. Yeah? So the starting point here will have the maximum amount of energy. That's why we call this maximum GPE one. When it goes down here, it has your maximum kinetic energy. When it goes up to this point, this is a new maximum uh, GPE. Why is it open and close with a comma? Because this maximum GPE is less than this. Because along the way, some of the GPE was converted to sound and heat energy. Alright? If we start off at 40, Along the way, it's still 40. Here is at 40. Here at 40. Kinetic energy. How did it now become 45? And if it's 45, it will have gone much higher. Above this height. It will be somewhere here, right? Like roller coaster. 
Well, the answer should be 4, right? Start off at 20. At point A, at point B is still at 20. Then goes to point C. Now it's, it's at 15 is the KE, less KE now. And there's now more and more uh, GPE. Still 20. Right, total is still 20. The total amount of energy, we cannot destroy or create energy. So that, that must be the same, must be conserved. Alright, that's all. I hope that helps you. Take care. Goodbye.